The Bicycle Frame Builder's Apprentice, Chapter 13 Connie's fear that the removal of the six-speed block would test her strength proved to be over-pessimistic. Having clamped the remover firmly into the vice in Ralph's workshop and having placed the wheel into position, she gripped the rim and tyre firmly with both hands and with one good twist she discovered she was able to wind it free quite easily. Rather sensibly, she had Malk standing by just in case, and he supervised her efforts. Whoever put this on knew what they were doing, he pointed out as he inspected the threads of the freewheel. He wiped the grease with the end of his finger and showed it to her. It looks as though it's full of rust. No, Connie, quite the opposite. It's copper slip grease. That's why it's a golden brown colour. Copper slip? She looked up at him. A green eyes a question. Yes, it's usually used on the seat post. It prevents aluminium bonding to steel by introducing a third metal, namely copper. That prevents the electrolytic action between steel and aluminium, which results in cold welding. Some greases, like lithium grease, which is used to lubricate bearings, tend to promote bonding. Then you end up with a seized-in seat post, which isn't a good idea. She nodded her head, indicating she understood. She made a mental note to ask Ralph if he had supplies, and to obtain them if he hadn't. She remained silent for a long moment. Malk anticipated a question, and eventually she said, I wish you lived here. You know all about bikes, and I need to learn so much. He laughed. I'm only a telephone away, Connie. You can get in touch any time. You know I'll always try and answer any question you might have. There is one you could help me with. Go on, what is it? Mr Hodgson's bike. The lugs are so beautiful. How do they make them like that, and why? Why do you spend so much time designing new shapes for your raw iron work? After all, you can make a hanging bracket that will do its job efficiently by bending a strip of steel into a right angle and then put in a strut in place to form a triangle. That's all it needs for rigidity and strength. Instead, you go to great lengths to come up with more and more fancy designs. Why is that? To make them eye-catching and attractive. Exactly. And each one's distinctive to you, isn't it? Each is a unique design. It's as good as putting your signature on them, and that's pretty much the reason why some bicycle frame builders do the same. They spend hours drilling and cutting and filing the lugs into fancy shapes because they want to make their work distinctive instead of looking like some mass-produced object from any old factory. In effect, they and you are the heirs to William Morris. William Morris? Who was he? A man of many parts. He's most famous for his wallpaper designs. But in his day he was an author, a socialist and revolutionary, as well as being a translator. Thanks to him, many of the old Norse sagas can now be read in English, and he wrote news from nowhere. He was also a founder of the arts and crafts movement. He was a friend of Eleanor Marx, and approved of her father's thoughts on alienation. To cut a long story short, he was appalled by capitalism's waste of natural resources, and the artificial division of labour between production and design, craftsmanship and art, mechanisation had introduced. He was against the inbuilt obsolescence brought in by businessmen to ensure maximum profits. He believed that useful objects should be made to last, not thrown away after a short time, and that they could and should be made beautiful and not merely functional goods something that both the producer and the subsequent owner could take pride in. Mal was never one to use two words when a score would do. Nonetheless, Connie listened with patience, and the message wasn't wasted. Could you show me how to do it? Do what exactly? Cut out the lugs. I noticed those on the tandem are quite fancy. Are you still intent on building yourself a bike frame? I thought you'd be content with your wrought iron work. She smiled. No, that's just a means to an end. Our sales of them are helping us build up capital for tools and raw materials, 
I still want to build frames when I leave school. Ralph's been showing me how to braze as he promised, and that's how I put my raw iron work together now, instead of riveting. But I could be building up a stock of lugs and fittings in the meantime, couldn't I? The frame builder nodded, a thoughtful expression on his face. It hadn't taken Connie long to finish the job of putting the wheel back in good order. Malk had then given the bike a final look over, and after checking the gears were functioning properly, following the removal and refitting of the wheel, and giving a final check to the brakes, pronounced all was well. Both had departed to the kitchen for a welcome cup of tea. Connie phoned Pearl to let her know the bike was ready, and then asked her mother if the lamb needed feeding. In the meantime, Malk had filled the kettle and set it on the stove, much to Elsie's approval. The farmer's wife had taken a liking to the Mancunian, not least because of the way he encouraged her daughter, but it had really been Tom who had impressed her most. Elsie believed that children are often a greater indicator of their parents' true characters than many adults might care to admit. She was also quite aware that although Tom had a good relationship with his mother, for he was always talking about her and did so with affection, it was his father whom he lived with, and it was his father who had shouldered the day-to-day -day responsibilities for bringing the lad up from when he still wore nappies. In Elsie's eyes, going on the strength of her own interactions with the young lad and Rosie Ackroyd's tales of him, Mal seemed to have made a pretty good job of it. One thing was for sure, whatever differences Tom's parents had with each other, they certainly hadn't allowed them to affect their child. True, the bicycle frame builder wasn't much to look at, save when he broke into a smile, which, perhaps luckily for him, wasn't infrequent. Nonetheless, he was good-humoured and good company. Now that Pearl had decided to take up cycling, well, maybe they might get together. She wondered if she should act the role of matchmaker or leave things to take their natural course. Her thoughts on a possible romance found their echo elsewhere, although they had nothing to do with Pearl or Mal. As soon as the Mancunian had made the brew and Connie had joined them at the table, the youngster suddenly asked, where's Rosie got to? I think she's gone for a walk with Ralph. I think your brother suggested they might pick some bluebells for the guest room. I'm expecting visitors tonight. Connie smiled. Elsie was not slow to notice the amused look on her face. All right, Connie, my love, tell us what you are thinking. The spring is sprung, romance is in the air. You're talking in riddles. Anyhow, that's not how it goes. It goes like this. The spring is sprung, the grass is wrist, I wonder where the birdie is, the bird is on the wing, but that's absurd, the wing is on the bird. A daughter and the frame builder laughed, but then Connie said, you know what I mean mum, I told Rosie a couple of older girls were chasing Ralph, and she'd have to make a move soon if he wasn't to escape her clutches. Elsie shook her head, you shouldn't wind young Rosie up, she admonished. I've told you before, affairs of the heart are not to be taken lightly. Anyway, I'm quite sure our Ralph knows on which side his bread's buttered. Rosie doesn't need to chase him, I can assure you. And before you say another word, young Tom's gone along to keep an eye on both of them. Connie gazed into her mother's eyes in wonder. She seemed to know a lot more about Rosie's relationship with Ralph than she'd ever expected. Indeed, she seemed to know a lot more than Connie did.